NBUSN 158, social media, to, social media and collaboration tools for business, students primarily communicate through a closed Facebook group. Uh, a closed Facebook group is a place on Facebook that people with common interests can come together and share um, anything they want to share. So in this case, it's around our course. And in a closed Facebook group, interactions are only seen by group members, so it really creates a safe environment for students to come together, collaborate, and share. Now, on these on this Facebook um, group they can post here and they can leave comments for other people and what they really want to do in here is on which is part of their assignments is to reflect analyze and evaluate different types of um, concepts around the course content so they will look at different um, they'll share what they've done they'll share their experiences they'll reflect um, they also share their blog posts and they share their resources so in this class students um, create social media email campaigns they create um, infographics and they also create websites and they'll share that on here and they'll provide feedback so that they can learn from each other and reflect on their learning a lot of times in their blogs they're asked to reflect on the process of learning new software new tools and how they and what they would recommend for other students. Um, all other blog posts focus on students finding other resources, bringing those resources to each other, and um, sharing that so that everyone can learn from each other. Uh, the Facebook group creates a real meaningful way to interact with other students in the same way that they do in the real world. It's The interactions are far more robust than those contrived in a Laolima discussion posting. My BUSN 158 course is designed into a Google site, so all, each week is clearly laid out for all 17 weeks. A student can come to any given week here, um, easily click on the page for that week and see clearly defined objectives, an introduction, um, a topic summary, as well as links to other resources that they need to review. And these are all open source resources and then they have their activities here and also clearly define what they need to do in each of the activities so I have this set up for every single week here in terms of having resources available to them oh, having activities here and then having a detailed assignment now after every week is done or actually part of the assignment is also this collaboration piece here which is clearly defined in terms of what they need to do and how they need to share what they've created um, on our Laolima site here, I do keep an active gradebook, so the gradebook is updated every week. Um, I have assignments and everything detailed here. I also post announcements to let students know when the grades have been posted. And I also weekly upload individual, well, individual rubrics to their Dropbox. So as you can see for this one student here, they will have rubrics for all their blog posts, all their weekly activities, and if you were to click on one of these here, you will see the activity for that week and the detail of the rubric. So every week there are multiple rubrics. Some have more than one week because the blog post is also included in the rubric here. Now student, I also respond to emails within 24 hours and most times within 12 hours. Um, there's always detailed comments on here on each of the rubrics. Um, they also, like I said before, they also communicate via their Facebook group where they can collaborate with each other here. And they also have a Blackboard Collaborate room available to them if they want to meet with me or meet, meet with other students. course students learn by doing and creating real life application applying skills are applied to real business situations so students here have to actually create their own content based on what they've learned so for example in week six here they learn how to develop a website and they actually have to go and create a website for a business or for their topic so I have a student here that created one for first Fridays at Mililani because she teaches at Mililani this is an event that she hosts um, every first Friday um, also, students have to create different types of email campaigns, 
like this one here, and they also have um, different infographics. So every week is a different topic in which they have to create, share, and um, do things that are applicable to real life situations. Um, students are also asked to be reflective learners as part of the assignments here. For example, in, in week five, they're asked to, in their blog post, evaluate different types of cloud-based storage and then write a blog post about it and share that blog post with their fellow classmates. Um, they are also, so they become self-reflective learners on the process that they have to go through. They have to find new information, new sources, bring that together and create content here and share that so, so in order to help others learn. A lot of the communication here, um, they learn actively and give feedback through their um, Facebook posts in which they are required to reply to and evaluate some of the content that other students created. This creates a real um, sharing environment where students have to share what they've created. In this course, the learning objectives and outcomes are clearly stated on each page of our course website. Um, students know exactly what they have to do. The assignments are clearly stated here on the bottom in which clearly outline what is what is expected of them each week and what they have to do. Um, to measure their learning outcomes here I do have individual rubrics and I upload their rubrics to provide them meaningful feedback on their progress on and how to assess how they're progressing in the course. So for example um, week 10 assignments we have what they needed to do here and we give meaningful feedback. Um, so every week has a different individual rubric for them in which they have to complete different tasks and they are assessed with these rubrics. Now these rubric grades are also posted into gradebook so that students can regularly see their progress throughout the course. All right, students complete a variety of hands-on projects, reflective writing in blogs, and research, and a research project throughout the course. There is also um, a variety of ways in which they submit assignments. So they'll submit assignments, um, and one of the ways we assess them is submitting assignments through Laulima. Another one is through our Facebook group in which they share and provide links to their work. And then a third one is sharing within um, collaboration environment where we have a shared folder on Google Drive or other share platforms. So in week one here, students are made aware of the digital literacy requirements of the course through this introduction video. It, will go, it goes over um, the tools that we'll be covering, the purpose of the course, and what they'll need to be able to do and the tools they know they have access to throughout the course. Um, in weeks one and two, we cover two of the major things that the students will use throughout the course. So the first one here is going to be your Facebook group, Facebook account and Facebook group, and the second one is a um, how to create a blog. So these blog assignments and Facebook group sharing is done throughout the course and made clear in weeks one and two and what they need to be able to do for the rest of the course. Um, the course is organized by objective, introduction, topics, and activities for each week. So it's clearly it's clear to the students of where to find information they need. I also have on the bottom here um, resources if they need. So this is the blog rubric here that they can access directly from the site. Um, there also I have a whole lot of other learner resources built into each week. For example, in week eight for sharing videos, we have a whole list of free resources that students can review if they don't know how to use something or they're not up to date with how to convert video files this is something that they can easily click on here to download the free converters they can watch a video on how to use it and these are all embedded into every single week in the course so the learner support is not only in the first week or two but it's in um, it's built in through each week